This past weekend, I decided to give my 1972 300 SEL 4.5 a little love. There's a project that I've been wanting to do on this car for the last three years. You know, when I did the conversion and the overhaul of the fuel delivery system, I can't believe how much better this engine runs. For example, I used to start it up, and if the car were in the shop, it would almost gas you out. And after converting the fuel pump and replacing all the components aft for this fuel injection system, this thing just runs beautifully. And it, it doesn't have that noxious smell. I'm surprised that it made such a huge difference. But the next thing I want to do that's going to make a huge difference is convert this point ignition to an electronic ignition. Now, you know I've done that on my four and six cylinder cars. My 1959 220SE has electronic ignition. My 1970 280SL Happier has electronic ignition. But it's not so easy with these V8s. You know, this is a 1972 model. It's kind of the end of the era for points at condenser ignition for Mercedes-Benz. And just the other day, I received an email from a enthusiast collector in Australia asking me, hey, Kent, does your electronic ignition work for a 3.5 coupe? And he sent me these beautiful pictures of his 3.5. That kind of motivated me to get back on this job. I know it'll work, but the problem is getting the parts that come with this unit to fit in a V8 distributor. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. The distributor on these early V8 engines is located right on the front of the engine. So access is easy, it's easy to work on them. And this is very typical of any of those older cars. You guys have been around cars. You know, you pull off the distributor cap and here's your rotor. You remove the rotor and right underneath it are the points off the side is the condenser. Well, the nice thing about this conversion that we sell is you don't have to mess up your distributor. You don't have to change the distributor cap. You don't have to change the rotor. And if you remove the points, which you have to do, and you remove the condenser, you can install the components for the electronic ignition. And if sometime in the future you want to return your car to the original, you can reinstall the points and the condenser and go back to that old system if you want. Okay, so that, that's one of the nice things about this one. But I've got to get the points out of here, I've got to get the condenser out of here, and then I've got to install a rotor, a slotted rotor, and an optical trigger that'll drive this electronic ignition. I'm going to take you over to the bench now and I can show you the components that make up this kit. Instead of points and condenser, the electronic ignition is going to use what's called a rotor disc and an optical trigger. So these don't touch, just this rotor disc rotates by this optical trigger, these two points, and every time it breaks the trigger, it'll fire. So that's why there's eight slots in this rotor disc because it's an eight cylinder engine. So you've got to be able to mount this in the distributor so that the trigger points are positioned right about in the middle of this disc and it's got to be in far enough that it is covering the slots of the disc and not rubbing, okay? <laughs> so let me show you. So you pull this out of the kit and you push it on to the distributor cam. And here's the problem. Look at this. It rocks and it pops off. And on most of the conversions of this type, when you push the rotor on the shaft, it should come down if you can see this come down and it should hold this rotor disc to keep it from coming off well in the case of these distributors it does not look at this this will wiggle like this and it'll just pop right off well you can imagine if that happened while you're driving down the road to have that rotor disc it won't come all the way off because the optical trigger is going to keep it but if it gets jammed up like this you know your engine is going to quit so this is the main reason I have not finished this project. Trying to find a way to put this rotor disc on and keep it tight. And then I have to be able to mount the optical trigger in here. And currently, if you mount the optical trigger down in here, it's too low, so it rubs against the rotor disc. And all this has to be done so that it is aligned perfectly and you don't have any rock or slop or any ability for this rotor disc to come loose. So this is the challenge. This is gonna require 
some engineering on my part. I've got Gerson working on this. We're going to try to figure out some way first to stabilize the rotor. Then we're going to have to figure out a way to come in here and mount this optical trigger so that we can get it in the right position. I know that if I can solve this problem, this is going to work. That's the unit that you install to give you the power you need to give the, the spark. Every one of these that I've converted, I've gotten better fuel economy, quicker starts, and less exhaust smoke. They just seem to run cleaner with a hotter spark. So I'm hoping that this works in the next video. If there is a next video, I'll come back and I'll have that four or five running with this system installed and let's see if I'm successful.